while Mickey bribes the crowd, I will get started. Is that time? We are talking about scaling community conversations and decision making. I am Ben Nellinson, um, and Mickey Metz is out giving out candy. And we are with uh, the AGARC, um, we, are, we are with AGARC, we are a worker-owned cooperative, um, which means we do make uh, democratic um, decisions internally, um, but we, uh, most of this presentation will not be drawing on our own uh, experiences because it's about democracy at scale and decision-making at scale, and we are a cooperative of six people. Just so where we're coming from, um, of sort of a founding principle for our, our cooperative and, um, you know, in our lives is having the most power possible to all, you know, get, giving the most power possible to pe all people over their own lives. Um, and, you know, from doing websites that people can actually edit and, you know, online and are free software so they can do whatever they want with um, is important. And, you know, um, these are the concepts of justice and liberty, which I like to say. That's prettier to say, but it's harder to make sure you're talking about the same thing, that, uh, you know, justice and liberty can be very flowery and squishy, and there's whole, you know, terrible economists who make a career of arguing that, you know, liberty is the freedom for someone to do whatever they want with their own property, no matter if other people are being completely denied any freedom because of that. Um, so we are talking about... Um, group decision making and basic thesis of that we're going to get to uh, is that group decision making requires conversation uh, to influence a decision you need to be part of the conversation um, conversations with a large number of people need to be moderated and if you don't have equal access to the conversation a fair share that is a fair share of control over the moderation you don't have equal say in the decision so power is organization um, we are developers and designers and are fairly famously in our own self-conception uh, hard to organize. Uh, you may have <laughs> seen the slide or uh, just heard people t likening managing developers or designers to herding cats. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that you know, our power in our community is the level of organization we've achieved um, sometimes through the code. Um, and so just knowledge is not power, um, is Mary and Kaba a great organizer and uh, prison abolitionist um, who's been working for you know, transformative justice for a long time says it's, you know, organization is power, not, not simply knowledge, um, which is why we're talking about how to work together as a community. So uh, inevitably, um, in any, any, any movement, any formation of people, inevitably there's going to be informal communication networks. And so uh, Joe Freeman wrote about this in, 19, in the 1970s in, in the uh, context of the women's liberation movement. Um, in our resources slide, um, which you'll, we'll, we link to at the end, so don't worry about any citations or notes. We'll all be online. Um, uh, you know, I, I've just taken her quotes about the women's liberation movement and just put in the open source software movement as a, as a thing, and it just reads exactly the same. But the point is that inevitably, um, informal communication networks of friends are elitist and exclusive. And so that for everyone to have an opportunity to be involved in a given group and to participate in its, act, in it, in its activities, the structure must be explicit, um, not implicit. That's why we're talking about it. And then sort of the weakest reason for having some form of democratic governance is still a pretty big one. It's people having a feeling of influence of being heard, um, which I'm not gonna just go around the room and ask, but it's been something that's been on the decline and the wane in, in the Drupal community, not feeling a lot of control. So going to Drupal. Drupal is not a democracy. Um, uh, having a, a benevolent dictator for life model um, you know, doesn't work. So uh, 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 Nedjo Rogers of Chocolate Lily has involved in the Drupal Association when it started um, in Europe and proposed that it have a, a genuinely democratic structure and that didn't happen and, you know, 
like 12, no, 15 years later, <laughs> we are <laughs> still, uh, yeah, no, that long. Uh, we, are, we are still having those effects. So the, um, the Drupal Governance Task Force, uh, which did a lot of work over end of 2017 and, and through to the end of 2018, their very first recommendation um, is, is begins having a BDFL model, bene benevolent a dictator for life model, um, means loyalty, time, and attention are divided. The, there is often frustration as pressure for change and decisions reach an individual bottleneck. There is a strong feeling that any community change or action requires Dries's approval before commencing, let alone expanding. The project is bigger than one individual. It's time to recognize that and place a community group at the center. And this is a group that was authorized and chosen by Dries. Um, but you know, that suggestion hasn't gone anywhere in the five months since it was made. So it's you know, sort of in the same thing. It's, and they, they talk about this a lot in their report, that you know, people don't want to put a lot of work into improving governance if you don't feel that it's, it's going to get somewhere. It's one of the the least returns. Um, so what has Drupal been doing and how has it been uh, running <laughs> its uh, decision making internally? Um, so the, one of the things we have going for ourselves, I feel, is that we um, do not generally self-identify as a meritocracy, which is a start because the word meritocracy comes from a political sat satire. It was never meant to be something we should aspire to, the opposite, a warning about how we rationalize um, what we believe we've earned. And if that sentence doesn't seem applicable to you in the tech industry and its cyclical of discussion and sexism, racism, and occasionally classism even gets talked about, um, please read uh, Garen Mean's blog post uh, that I took that from. Um, and then, you know, just cartoon about how um, the, the, inst the effects of institutional racism and every other sort of uh, institutional and continuing uh, thing doesn't just go away. And that if we as a community are at all serious about fairness, it means looking beyond what, you know, we, we you know, what, it means doing a little bit of our part to make the world more just, which isn't just saying that, oh, well, in our community, we're not going to um, discriminate. It means that we actually have to go farther and, and work towards justice and try to bring resources to those who don't. Um, and also, a community of equals needs, with the non hierarchical method of communication, needs to control harassment, or you will slam your computer and go away, and we lose lots of other people. And that's another thing that, especially the, uh, um, Geek feminism discussion of meritocracy covers. Um, so we identify a little bit more as a duocracy. Uh, Angie Byron likes to use the term duocracy. I'm really proud that I suggested it, stealing from other communities back in like 2008. Um, but uh, the idea is that you know you can you know the decisions are mostly made actually by people who just step up and do something. And so I actually want to, so anyhow, so half of all open source projects have only one committer according to Olo. And I don't have, um, I don't have a, um, and the numbers for Drupal modules, but I think it's similar. Like vast majority will be one active maintainer. And these projects don't have to worry about scaling community decision making. There's one decision maker, maybe two. And that's actually fantastic. Um, you know, as you know, there's a you know, bad side of like that, seems like you know, that's not the community power we generally think about. But the good thing is that um, anything you can do entirely on your own is something that you can just go and do. And so Drupal's modular architecture has, has been what's enabled to have such a large community without having strong decision-making tools. And, that's, and that, so it's not the idea that, and this is not like surprising to us in a worker-owned cooperative, like we don't take everything to a democratic vote. Uh, whoever is most affected or has the most skill goes ahead and, and makes the decision. Um, so I do, do want to emphasize that a large part of Drupal's decision making has been solved by devolving. And I mean, I should also mention that in free software, the ultimate, op, you know, 
freedom is to, to fork. You know, that's the point of free software. And that the backdrop community has done this and in fact has really interesting governance of their own. Like, so they forked a community as well as the code um, and, and are a place to look for, for governance. So, um, you know, the, the inherent um, freedom uh, in, in free software has already been exercised in Drupal and it's, you know, it's no longer just theoretical about, you know, how, how do you still have the freedom to make decisions, it's actually happened. So, you know, that, that's, that's an important structural thing underlying um, our community also. But there's still lots of matters where uh, we have the need to make collective decisions. And the good news is that despite, you know, many talking about how participative democracy and social equality can only work in a small community or activist group, historically, um, and I'm quoting David Graeber and David Wengro um, on how to change the course of human history, is that egalitarian cities and regional confederacies are historically quite commonplace. And actually egalitarian families and households are not. And this is the Iroquois Confederacy, which is a very large, very horizontal confederacy. Other historical examples. Um, one of the major problems of, there are several major problems uh, with governing people is whom you get to do it, or rather, who manages to get people to let them do it to them. And this is <laughs> Douglas Adams. To summarize, it is a well-known fact that those people who must want to rule people are ipso facto those least seated to do it. To summarize the summary, anyone who is capable of getting themselves made ruler or president should on no account be allowed to do the job. And to summarize the summary of the summary, people are the problem. Um, so um, the good news is that people are problematic in sort of consistent ways, and there's all sorts of things we can do to make ourselves better. And so this is the point where systems matter. It's, you, know, you can never just say at the individual level, and so it's not the problem of who is a benevolent dictator for life. The problem is having a benevolent dictator for life structure um, or you know, in anything else. The problem is generally not the people, it's how we've set up the systems for how people work. And so we touch on a few tiny subsets of um, you know, regular problems that people have and how to fix them. So um, one of the basic problems is that no one cares about decision making processes until there's something they don't like. <laughs> how obvious is <laughs> here, yes. And, um, <laughs> So we're just going to talk about you know, what kind of democracy, what kind of community decision making do we want in place for when there is a problem. Um, you know, for inspiration, um, the Zapatista Caracol networks is sort of a, a modern one that's taking lots of inspiration from um, long-standing indigenous communities in southern Mexico and um, has some similarities to some of the stuff we're talking about as far as being very clear about nested levels of decision making and spheres of influence. Um, but we might as well just, don't have much time here, get straight to the tools. Uh, <laughs> so um, Lumio is a tool that makes democratic decision making, yeah, makes, do you wanna take sure. Lumio? <laughs> Lumio is in a cooperative and they've des designed a wonderful tool for decision making that allows everyone to either vote on it, yes or no, or to decide that they need more information before they can vote. So it opens up a way you can discuss in a nonlinear uh, fashion, and uh, it, because it's difficult, how, how large can a group be before the design and format must change to accommodate a larger group? Uh, the process for eight people to make a decision is wildly different than a process for 800,000 people to make a decision or for a whole uh, community that is a city to make a decision together. So um, it, it must be modified and w you have to realize when to modify that format. When is it getting so exhaustive and complex that no one can understand the system? Um, that is a real pitfall because um, people don't usually tell you that, they just leave. So, so lumio.org, and um, that, that's in our resources links also. And the people who made Lumio will be the first to tell you that there aren't technological fixes for human problems. They have 
uh, a great cooperative handbook, and they're part of the Inspiral Network, which is a bunch of cooperatives, or many of them cooperatives. The network itself is not formally cooperative, but that tries to solve a lot of community decision-making problems. And they, you know, the builders of this software actually feel that it's, you know, best for, you know, groups of, you know, basically more than 10 and less than 100. Um, and so one of the questions, you know, is, you know, when you have a large community is, is how do you make decisions? And hearkening back to Douglas Adams and, you know, so Walt Kelly, who always had his cartoon character uh, declare that he wasn't, didn't want to be president, so that made everyone else want to make him, to elect him every, every, yeah, even more. So there was a, <laughs> every four years a series of cartoons about everyone else trying to get him elected while he tried to hide. Um, you know, going to that, there is a well-established approach to um, making sure that those who seek power are not the ones you give power. Um, and the ancient Greeks, that turned out, thought about this and acted on it, and it's called sortition. Um, in modern terms, it's usually meant taking from the group of people in a community uh, uh, just a random selection of them and giving them the time and the resources to make decisions on behalf of the community. So it's, it's not, you know, whoever happens to volunteer, it's actually a random selection and then giving people the skills and the time and the resources to make decisions. And then at some point, you know, in a set time, you change that. And it's got a lot of good approaches to reducing corruption, um, a lot of good uh, uh, things for making sure you're inclusive and not just, you know, taking the people who have the most time and resources. Um, and another application of, you know, sort of the same idea is, um, you know, just the technical hack to ha allow large, um, to have us, let us have large, genuinely free and fair communities um, is to have a randomly selected group of people make decision on whether a particular message should be pushed out to the whole group. So sort of sortition light in the sense that, you know, it's not a lot of time and resources you're giving people, but you're just sharing the work of deciding what communication goes out. Um, and yeah, that's fundamental level. And we're going to try to go quickly, so there's time for questions here. Um, and uh, Visions Unite, which is a project that I'm part of, um, will be an incubator and ongoing communication tool set for all kinds of cooperative ventures that need or want to scale and want that, you know, kind of put the community in charge of the, the communication aspect of things, sort of as the precursor to being able to have point I'm not using my computer is so it did do that sorry <laughs> was the soundtrack sorry just this um, on scale so um, and then uh, another sort of modern twist on some of these ancient things of idea of, of nesting and has done a good job of defining it and I think is a really good fit for volunteer heavy projects like Drupal um, in that it's, it's a lot easier to, um, yeah, to, you know, when, when, when you're a company or something, it's like everyone's being paid, everyone has time. Um, and so you sort of, sociocracy is basically sort of a balance between the, or has potential for balancing between the self-selected aspect of, of duocracy and having some sort of representative democratic control. Um, so it's just a structure, um, you know, and emphasizes learning and evolving, clear and just decisions, and then a fractal circle structure, which is, is sort of the key to devolving power. Um, and also, you know, anyone actually doing the implementing has that um, control. So everyone gets a say in the direction and condition of their work, and, you know, no one else gets to say they're just following orders. The structure is a bunch of, of circles, each linked to one or more other circles by a, a double link. So I, you know, groups connected, there's, in each group, one person is a representative to another group. Um, and not every group has to be connected, only groups that generally have to work together. And each group makes its own decisions and then, um, you know, goes to the others. And so it's not like a pure hierarchy, it's whichever groups in their work relationships have to work together. 
all decisions made within circles are made by consent, um, which is a term they use for consensus, and it's, it's basically the same thing. But they want to emphasize that not everyone, you know, has to be in charge, you know, in, in agreement with the collective decision. They're just not going to block it. And but it, as developers, we need to understand that the um, decisions need to include the people who will be using this software or whatever it is that you're building. Um, without them, you're just back to a hierarchy of telling people what to do. So setting up the structure for everyone to be able to participate is important ongoing discussion. Exactly. So has anyone heard of the platform cooperativism movement? No? There's a handbook about it. It's about building platforms that are owned by the people that use them, like an Uber owned by the drivers. And um, this is definitely a way of getting everyone to put in their, their ideas because the, the platform is used by all. So recently, the uh, platform cooperative uh, movement has gotten a million dollar grant to create a toolkit, co a platform cooperative toolkit, which does include some software, but it's mostly the resources a person would need to start a platform, like they're um, lo finding out about local government structures, what, what fo forms do they need to fill, what legal aid will they need, um, those type of things that are scattered. You know, they're all publicly available, but it's so scattered, you, it would take you maybe months to organize that. Yeah, and yeah, exactly, I, I mean, a corollary of um, making sure that everyone gets to be heard from is that not every decision um, is one that everyone needs to weigh in, and, and also that you need to actively include yeah, <laughs> the users and the platform cooperative movement provides an approach to that. Yeah, so and all day long, people, technologists de are demanding that people use our software, use the software, but I don't see anyone telling everyone to go meet their neighbors and find out what they need, which is where it should start. Um, from the, skip that. From the cooperative movement, David Hammer states, uh, if we're not focused on building things that scale, we're not building institutions that change society. If we're not building institutions that change society, we're not doing what we need to do at this historical moment in time. So that's why we're both involved with Utopia, which is like five people involved. Um, but grander ideas. Um, <laughs> and it has all kinds of big decisions to make and not all that much structure yet. So secret plan to rule the world. Um, build a web, you know, for Utopias, build a platform serving sites for grassroots groups, use the revenue Build, make it the best platform and use that revenue to build a powerful communication network under de democratic control. Um, but, you know, that's side project and there's lots of really exciting projects and <laughs> yes, um, I guess, it's, um, but, you know, Mickey talks about the building blocks of freedom, free software, cooperative platform, solidarity economy, and personal power, uh, but we'll, we'll, uh, yeah, without personal power, none of this will work. If you don't encourage other people to gain their personal power, they will not be putting in their vote. They will be abstaining, usually, or like on the fringe of this. So that's most important to encourage people to get their own personal power and to be able to use it. And that takes a group effort. Yeah, and so we see just intersections between um, like our free software communities and all these other groups that are working for a more just world and ultimately a more, you know, giving people more power over their own lives. Um, and there's a lot of exciting work in the solidarity economy too, but yes. um, we will go to questions. Questions, yes. Sure, oh, yeah, why not? It's being recorded. So, and we can't forget those without internet access, too, in this whole thing. So we don't have time to talk about it, but please think about it. <laughs> Hi, Wes from Third and Grove. I'm just curious, because um, some other open source projects have kind of a commercial 
structure and then the open source version. <laughs> um, what are some of the pros and cons of that approach for an open source project? Mm, yeah. um, revenue streams are really great, um, but usually that, that bifurcates um, things. So you essentially you know, have a commercial project that is not accountable to the community, that's, that's controlling things. So yeah, what we're really talking about is how to have yeah, with the platform cooperatives is how to have a revenue stream that is accountable to the community. Um, and you know, Drupal is, is, I think it's better off in not having, you know, in that, in that you could like take out the top 10 companies as big and concentrated as many mergers we have. You could take out the top 10 companies and there'd still be a huge Drupal ecosystem. And that's very, very few projects of any kind that can say that. So I think we actually benefit from the fact that it, we didn't start with that model. Dries was a PhD student, couldn't start a company for the first six years or so of Drupal, yeah. and and we grew this huge ecosystem. You know, before there was Acquia. So as much as you know, some people outside Drupal think of Acquia equals Drupal. People in Drupal don't really think of that because we we are familiar with it. And so, um, yeah, just real quickly, you know, Drupal is this interesting thing, and in that's though that you know. Dries is, you know, has control of the code and, you know, tries to separate that from his role of, at Acquia. And again, I think he does that better than anybody could, but it's just not something that structurally you should have. Um, and then the Drupal Association, you know, which you sort of think of as representing the community, actually has sort of this narrow um, charter um, to handle sort of the events and some of the infrastructure stuff and have no influence over the code. Um, so, you know, we sort of have like sort of a hole in, in sort of the heart of what we would have, which where some other things would have a very similar split in that they'd have the Drupal Association and then they'd just have a company basically that's making most of the decisions about the code. And we have something that's sort of similar, but it's a little bit, you know, we, we don't, we, we keep it, you know, conceptually separate. You know, it's not a company. It's three as an individual who then appoints the people who have the final say over the code. Yes, sorry. Uh, I what, wanted to say I really liked how you, how you put it all together. Thanks. Um, Thank you. So beginning of the year, I started to work for a company where we use Holacracy, which is kind of same, similar as so sociocracy, but a licensed yes. model. Yes. And what I really like is that with the consent over consensus approach, we can really take decisions fast and where, where they matter. Do you see yeah. us in the Drupal community being able to implement such practices or what, what would be your roadmap to, to get better at those practices? One of the things that we're doing in Boston is there's a wonderful group called Ujima. Uh, the Ujima project is uh, working to revitalize areas of town that have gone crazy and defunct and they're working with community members to actually rate the businesses as to whether they're good for the community or not good for the community. So this is a practice that should be put in place in every community where you are looking at are there extractive businesses uh, taking stuff out of the community or are they putting in? So engaging with people who are not Drupaled or anything, nothing to do with Drupal but are, that are in your local government structure is extremely important just government so, solidarity. Well, economy. yeah, the solidarity economy. Mm -hmm. And so that we, do, tra we tr um, do business with those that are doing good for the community and um, the extractive businesses, we talk to them. I, I do see that, yeah, that, like Mickey said, that some of our better opportunities are probably outside of Drupal. Um, mostly, <laughs> though, I think that you know, we don't have a lot of governance defined. This is a duocracy moment where you know, any individual project within Drupal um, can try to do that. So, you know, with the Drutopia project, we're building on Drupal 8. We're not forking the software, but we're trying to have a revenue model and a governance model that that allows for this. So I, I do think, I think that the, you know, yeah, and it, I mean, it makes sense. You don't expect something to just say, well, I will go adopt this radical, you know, new approach, um, you know, even though like, you know, Zappos does holacracy and stuff. It's like, it's not that radical, but um, it's still not done a lot, so there's not a lot of examples, um, you know, that 
people from Drupal's perspective can easily see. And so, you know, why adopt something that's not tested? It is sort of on us as the community to put into practice the things we want to see. So I think that it's got to be from the ground up, and we can start to do this in specific projects. Um, I mean, you know, <laughs> there's actually a lot of opportunity for this because, like, there's still a lot of unofficial infrastructure in Drupal, a little less than historically. You know, more is under the Drupal Association, but, um, like, Slack, like, all of that huge amount of, community conversation that's going on is completely outside the Drupal Association right now. Mm -hmm. And the, the people who, who run the Slacks are, you know, you know, basically voluntarily trying to, you know, working with the community working group and working with all of that too, um, which is again like in a weird space with the not quite under the Drupal Association type thing, which is again why we propose there is those proposed. So anyhow, there's the Drupal governance issues linked linked from here, and we'll we'll keep updating these with resources. Um, yes. And so yeah, please throw your mail in there if you want to keep getting updates. Trust us, I'm it'll be like now. <laughs> every year and a half we actually ever email anybody. Um, it never happens. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do I do think there are there are opportunities and just quickly on sociocracy and holacracy. Um, holacracy does a, yeah puts a few twists on sociocracy, including putting a stronger emphasis on the organization. So I actually do think holacracy might not often in many cases be a better fit for a company that has sort of a strong specific mission, and sociocracy might be a better option for communities that that you know is a bit more fractal. So thank you for the question. Great. Uh, we're at time? Yes. Right. So yeah, we are at, at time, um, but any other questions, please come up. Thank you. Mm -hmm.